In the last section, we started taking a look at how we can get Docker Compose to automatically maintain and restart our containers. We added in a little bit of code to our node server to make sure that anytime we visited our root route, the server would automatically exit. When we visited that route, we were then able to flip on over to our terminal and see that our container stopped. We were also able to run Docker PS and verify that, yep, we only have one container now running. So in this section, we're going to figure out exactly how we can get Docker Compose to automatically restart that crashed or stopped container. Now, the first thing I want to tell you about is that little line of code that we added inside of our index.js file. Inside of here, we added in process.exit and passed in the number zero right there. The zero that we're adding in right there is what we refer to as a exit status code. By adding in a zero, we are indicating that we just exited our node server and we exited because we wanted to. Everything is okay. We didn't run into any errors. We stopped that running process because we meant to. If we added in a status code of anything besides zero, so one, two, three, 300, 400, 500, 5,000, any number besides zero, that means that our running process exited because an error occurred or something went wrong. Now that's a very important little tidbit to be aware of because it's going to affect exactly how Docker decides whether or not to restart our containers. So just keep that in your mind for just a moment. Okay, so here's how we're going to get Docker Compose to automatically restart a container. We're going to specify something called a restart policy inside of our Docker Compose file. There are four different restart policies that we have access to. By default, we have the no restart policy assigned to all of our containers. The no restart policy means if this thing crashes for any reason, do not attempt to restart the container. We also get the always restart policy, which as you might guess, means if the container stops for absolutely any reason whatsoever, automatically attempt to restart it. We get two others that we'll talk about in just a moment, but before we do, let's try adding in the always restart policy to our node server, and then try visiting it again and trying to get it to crash. So let's get to it. I'm gonna flip back over to my code editor. I'm gonna open up my Docker Compose file, and then I'm going to add a new line right after our node app specification right here. I'm gonna say restart always. So as you might guess, this specifies the always restart policy for our node app container. Notice how we specified a restart policy for one specific service or one specific server, excuse me, container. If we wanted to add a restart policy to the Redis server, we would have to add it onto that one specifically as well. But for right now, we'll go with just node app. Now I'm gonna save this file and we're gonna try bringing up our Docker Compose containers again and seeing what happens when our node application crashes. Okay, so I'm gonna flip back over to my terminal I'm going to hit Control C to stop that Node comp or excuse me, Docker Compose process, and then I will start them back up with Docker Compose up. We'll now flip open our browser again. I'll open a new tab. I do encourage you to make a new tab here as opposed to just refreshing the existing one you have. Sometimes Chrome does not quite refresh the server as you would expect if you reuse your tab. So I'm going to visit localhost colon 4001 again. I get the error message here, which is okay. If I flip back over to my terminal, after a second or two, you'll notice that we have gotten that exit message right there. But then very quickly after that, we got this new color here that essentially means that we just restarted that running container. So we've restarted the container and we again have a copy of Node.js listing on port 8081 inside the container. One thing that's kind of interesting here is that you'll notice that we are seeing multiple listening on port 81, 8081 messages here. That's totally fine. Technically, when you and I are stopping our container with that process.exit line, we're not actually deleting the container or stopping it or anything like, or killing it or anything like that. Technically, the container just stopping. And when Docker Compose decides to restart the container, it's reusing the one that we had previously created. And so when we reuse that container, we attach to the standard out log, which has all the previous messages appended on it as well. And that's why we're seeing multiple listing on port 8081s right here. All right, so back over to our diagrams. So as you might guess, the always restart policy says, hey, if this container stops for any reason, just go ahead and attempt to restart it. And we just saw that in action when we crashed our server. Now we also get access to the on failure restart policy. As you might guess, the on failure policy is only going to attempt to restart the running container 
if we get a error code, so a status code from that process.exit line other than zero. Let's try testing that out right now and just seeing what happens. Now I'm going to leave process.exit inside of index.js as zero right here. Okay, so we're still going to have an exit code of zero, which means we exited because we wanted to. But inside of my Docker compose file, I'm going to change the restart policy to be on dash failure, like so. Now I'll go back over to my terminal. I'll stop that running process with control C. I'll then start my Docker compose group back up with Docker compose up. Now if I open up my browser again, I'll again create a new tab and visit localhost 4001. I don't get any feedback here. If I go to my terminal, I'll see that I have an exit with status code zero. And now in this case, we say that, hey, we exited because we wanted to, no error whatsoever. But we specified a restart policy that says only attempt to restart it if we had a failure. So in this case, we're never going to see the container restart. We would have to change our exit code in order to see it restarted when using the on failure policy. Now, if you want to test that out yourself, feel free to do so. You could change the exit of zero right here to one or 10 or 100 or essentially any non-zero number. Just remember that if you do that, you will, re have to, you will have to rebuild your image by using docker compose up dash dash build like so. So again, if you wanna try it yourself, just don't forget the dash dash build. Now, the last policy that I wanna tell you about is the unless stopped policy. So unless stopped means always attempt to restart this container unless you or I at the command line forcibly tell that container to stop by running docker stop. So unless stopped right here basically means just always restart it, but if you and I really want it to stop, then it will stop. Now, one quick note here about the no restart policy. You'll notice that in this case, we put quotes around no. That's actually on purpose. So with all the other policies like always on failure and unless stop, you can just type in the raw policy name into your Docker compose file. So on failure like that right there. But if you're going to make use of the no restart policy, you specifically have to put it in quotes, either double or single. The reason for that is that in a YAML file, the value no, and you can see when I type it in, it appears as orange right here. So in a YAML file, the value no gets interpreted as false. So a false restart policy is different than a string of no. So that's why no specifically needs to be added in quotes so that it understands this is not a Boolean false, it's specifically the string no. Okay, so that's pretty much it on restart policies. Now, the last thing you might be a little bit curious about is why would we ever want to use always versus on failure? Well, it really comes down to the purpose of your Docker container. In some cases, you might have a container that you always, always, always want to make sure is running. A good example of this would be a web server. If you are running some public web application, chances are 100% of the time you want that server to be available. And so if you are running some type of web application, well, I would kind of expect you to use the always restart policy so that you are at least always attempting to keep your server running. On the other hand, if you are running some type of worker process, like some container that is meant to do some amount of processing on some file and then naturally exit, that would probably be a good use case for the on failure policy because that worker container might eventually finish its job. It might finish processing a file. And when it's completed processing that file, well, you probably don't wanna start it back up because it finished its job and you should probably just let it die and let it close out and not get restarted. And so if you have a worker process of some sort, well, that's probably where I would expect you to use the on failure policy. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's how we get Docker Compose to automatically maintain our containers. Now there's one last little note that I wanna share around Docker Compose. So let's take a quick break right here and continue in the next section.